Hi guys, today is 18th December 2018 and this is Daily Cut the Face brought to you by Neo IAS. And our topics are Pradhan Mandri Ujjwal Yojana, Pangolins, Pasha Sangam, Great Indian Bustard and our usual sessions MAP and PQRS. Before moving to the Daily Cut the Face, you have a surprise from our side. And today Neo IAS is launching Current Affairs Plus website. This is the home page of the particular website current affairs plus neoiascap.com. It is a one-stop solution for current affairs and it is the only exclusive website in India mainly focused on the current affairs related matters. And the website and content is prepared by a team of professional and competent experts. So today we are launching a new website neoiascap.com. It is the one-stop solution for current affairs in case of UPSC civil service preparation preliminary as well as mains. For easy access and revision, we have segregated the content into various themes and subjects. You can see it here. We have provided the entire system or segregated the entire system into various themes. You can see here learning cards. It is an innovative learning way, daily current affairs, learning aid store, quiz bank, video gallery as well as the dedicated mains corner. Even each individual subject is also categorized or segregated into a theme of contents like environment into protected areas in which you can see national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserve, etc. And the entire subject like economy, polity, environment, all the subjects have segregated into the various theme based model. And you could also explore our different innovative learning aids in the website. And you could also get the daily current affairs updates from the particular site. And if you are referring to the international relation or polity portion of the particular website, you can get updated about the recent news in uh, happened in that particular day. Okay, so our new website is neoiscap.com when the link is provided in the description section. Visit the website, tell your friends and happy learning from Neo IAS. And our very first topic is the Pradhan Mandri Ujjwal Yojana. The Union Cabinet has approved the expansion of the Pradhan Mandri Ujjwal Yojana and new categories are added according to the socio-economic caste census. And we know that Pradhan Mandri Ujjwal Yojana is nothing but providing free LPG connections to women in the BPL households. The main purpose of the scheme is to provide free LPG connections to the women in the BPL households and the beneficiaries are mainly SCST households, beneficiaries of Pradhan Mandri Avas Yojana that is PMAY Grami and Andhyodaya Anna Yojana, forest dwellers, most backward classes, a, a category of people which is considered as the most backward classes, T and X tea garden tribes as well as people residing in islands and riverine islands. So these seven beneficiaries are main categories uh, comes under the Pradhan Mandri Ujjwal Yojana. And this Pradhan Mandri Ujjwal Yojana is launched in the year 2016, May 1st. And the, the LPG will be issued in the name of the women belonging to the particular BPL family as part of the women empowerment. And the program is implemented by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. And this is the first welfare program implemented by that particular Ministry of Progr Petroleum and Natural Gas. Earlier, the target of the particular program was 5 crore, but recently the target has increased to 8 crore LPG connections. Earlier, it was 5 crore, but now it was increased to 8 crore LPG connections and 48 percentage of the beneficiaries of the particular program Pradhan Mandri Ujjala Yojana are scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. So, first news was about the Pradhan Mandri Ujjala Yojana and our next news is about the Pangolich. Pangolins is in news because the Raigad police arrested four persons who were trying to sell Indian pangolins. So, Indian pang four persons were trying to sell the Indian pangolins. The Raigad police arrested those particular persons. Pangolins are scaly and eaters and they are mammals. You can see the picture of a pangolin and you can see the scales in their particular body. And they are scaly and eaters and are mammals. They have large protective keratin scales. It is visible in the particular figure, keratin scales covering their skin. And 
this is these are the only known mammals have these kind of features that is the protective keratin scales around their body and pangolins are nocturnal that means they are active during night and their diet mainly consists of ants and termites and the ants and termites they capture using their long tongue the pangolins have a long tongue and by using their long tongue they catch ants as well as termites there are eight kind of pangolins all over the world but in india there are two kinds of found in which one is the indian pangolin and the second one is the chinese pangolin we can look into the conservation feature of this particular species and indian pangolin is endangered according to the iucn international union for conservation of nature and chinese pangolin is critically endangered so chinese pangolin is critically endangered and also both the uh, creatures were covered under the sites that means their trade is banned and they are also protected under the schedule 2 second schedule of the wildlife protection act 1972 so indian pangolin is endangered whereas chinese pangolin is critically endangered and they are also covered under the sites and under the schedule 2 of the wildlife protection act 1972 and the main threats main threats faced by these pangolins are mainly the poaching for their scales the scale is considered to be medicinal value have medicinal value but it's not proved yet but the scale is considered to be medicinal value so the poaching is one of the main threat faced by the pangolin and destruction of their natural habitat destruction of their natural habitat and the meat is very demanded in some particular places so their meat is very demanded in some particular places these are the main threats faced by the pangolins one is poaching and destruction of habitat as well as the demand for their meat and their conservation status is iucn indian pangolin is iucn endangered chinese pangolin is iucn critically endangered they are covered under sites and the second schedule of the wildlife protection act 1972 our next news is about the bhasha sangam and bhasha sangam is an initiative under the program ek bharat shreshth bharat and the main feature is to make or familiarize the students simple dialogues in all 22 languages which are which is present in the 8th schedule of the indian constitution so the main intention of this program bhasha sangam is to familiarize every child with simple dialogues in the 22 languages which is present in the 8th schedule of the indian constitution that is bhasha sangam bhasha sangam literally means the amalgamation of languages and the main intention is to familiarize every child with the simple dialogues in all 22 scheduled languages of india and it is part of the program ek bharat shreshth bharat and in addition to that uh, we need to look on a uh, portion which is the national curriculum framework of 2005 and this national curriculum framework forward a for put forward a policy of three language formula three language formula in which primary emphasis is goes to the regional language for the first language to be studied by any student should be his or her regional language so bhasha sangam the main objective is to familiarize every child uh, with the simple dialogues in 22 languages scheduled and uh, it is a part of the ek bharat shreshth bharat and our next news is about the great indian bustard great indian bustard is in news because only 20 great indian bustards are left with gujarat so only 20 great indian bustards are left in gujarat and it can be easily recognized by the black crown on the forehead irrespective of the pale neck and head you can see you can see a black crown on the head and the uh, neck and other parts are pale colored but the head is black colored almost like a crown you can see there and the great indian bustard can be considered as a one of the heaviest flying bird and they are opportunist eaters they mainly feed on grass seeds or insects or grasshoppers etc but occasionally sometimes even they eat or they prey on small rodents as well as the reptiles so they are opportunist eaters and the this great indian bustards are mainly seen in the four states of india one is the rajasthan gujarat maharashtra and karnataka rajasthan gujarat maharashtra and karnataka in which 
in Rajasthan, the great Indian bustard is the state bird of Rajasthan. And the current population of great Indian bustard is estimated to be 200 or less than 200. Only less than 200 great Indian bustards are still available in India. And the biggest threat, what are the threats? The biggest threat is hunting. Well, biggest threat is hunting as well as the occasional poaching outside its protected areas. And some minor threats are collision with the high tension wires or high tension electric wires as well as the fast moving vehicles. Even country dogs or desi dogs are also a threat to the life of the great Indian bustards. In addition to that habitat loss, habitat loss can be also considered as a threat to the mechanization, increasing mechanization and infrastructural development. Due to this, uh, the habitat of the great Indian bustard is diminishing. So, this also can be considered as a threat to the life of great Indian bustard. And we need to look on the conservation status. According to the Indian Wildlife Protection Act 1972, it is under the Schedule 1. So, the great Indian bustard is under the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act. And uh, according to IUCN, great Indian bustard is critically endangered. Critically endangered according to the IUCN. And it is listed in the CMS Convention, Convention on Migratory Species in the Appendix 1 of sites. Also, the bird is part of the National Wildlife Action Plan. So, our news was about Great Indian Bustard. It is included in the Schedule 1 of the in uh, Wildlife Protection Act as well as in the sites and critically endangered as part of the IUCN Red List. Our next section is the Map Aided Program. On Map Aided Program, we have the Adriatic Sea. And this is the Adriatic Sea. You can see the Adriatic Sea there. And Adriatic Sea is a body of water or water body separating the Italian Peninsula with the Balkan Peninsula. You can see it there. Italian Peninsula separating Adriatic Sea, separating Italian Peninsula with the Balkan Peninsula. And the Adriatic Sea also is the northernmost arm of the Mediterranean Sea. In Ionian Sea, Terranean Sea. And it, all are part of the Mediterranean Sea. And it, it can be considered as the northernmost arm of the Mediterranean Sea. The countries with coasts of the Adri Adriatic Sea are Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro and Albania. So, seas and neighboring countries are a potential UPSC question. And you can see these kind of questions in the previous UPSC exams. So, the MAPEDA program, uh, this particular session is uh, significant in that particular area. Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Montenegro and Albania are neighboring to the Adriatic Sea. And Adriatic Sea is the northernmost arm of the Mediterranean Sea as well as the sea separating Italian Peninsula with the Balkan Peninsula. And our next session and final session, our next and final session is the PQRS that is previous question revision series. These questions come from the UPC 2014 in the environment portion. Consider the following statements. Animal Welfare Board of India is established under the Environment Protection Act 1986. Second statement, National Tiger Conservation Authority is a statutory body. Third, National Ganga River Basin Authority is chaired by the Prime Minister. And the, which of the following statement given above is or are correct? Option A, one only. Option B, two and three only. Option C, two only. Option D, one, two and three or all of them. So, coming to the statements. First statement is the Animal Welfare Board of India is established under the Environment Protection Act 1986. The statement is very much false because the Animal Welfare was, Board was established under in 1962 under the Prevention of Cruelty Against Animals Act 1960 and not against the Environment Protection Act 1986. So, the statement one is wrong. The Animal Welfare Board is not established under the Environment Protection Act. It was established under the Prevention of Cruelty Against Animals Act 1960. Animal Welfare Board is not established under the Environment Protection Act 1986, but under the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960. Statement 1 is so. Now, we can look on to the options. 1 only, 2 and 3 only, 2 only, 1, 2, 3 only. We can simply eliminate the two options A as well as D. Now, the answer would be B or C. 
we can move on to the we can bypass the second statement and move on to the third statement national ganga river basin authority is chaired by the prime minister the statement is very much true national ganga river basin authority n g r b a is chaired by the prime minister only so the third statement is also right so we have two options left uh, which are b and c you can find three in b only so the answer will be b2 and 3 so among the three statements if you only know the two statements you can also answer the question so one is wrong three is right thus the answer is option b anyway we can uh, come to the second statement national tiger conservation authority is a statutory body yes it is a statutory body under the wildlife protection act so the answer for the particular question option one uh, statement one is wrong two is right and three is right right answer for this question is option b two and three only so thank you so much for watching uh, for the detailed news and explanations you can refer to the daily current affairs material which is provided in the description section also don't forget to check our new website exclusively for the current affairs neoascap.com thank you so much good night